everyone. It's time to talk about some fun jewelry things with Brilliant Earth. We're gonna be talking a little bit about metals. So I have a couple different rings and a couple different shades of um, color. So rose gold, yellow gold, white gold, white gold, and platinum. So that you can kind of see them right next to each other, different styles and different metals. Hopefully it will be helpful for you guys out there that are wavering between which metal do I choose? That's like a cus um, uh, question a lot of my customers are like, I just don't know what metal to choose. So um, hopefully this will be a little bit helpful. I'm gonna start off with just one of our super classic wedding bands called the Sienna. And I literally have it in white gold, rose gold, and yellow gold. So we'll do a very nice direct comparison. So this is the Sienna ring. It is a French pave diamond band. You can see those little French bright cut fishtails. It's about 2.3 millimeters wide, so I wouldn't consider it super thick or super thin. It is a very popular style, so kind of why I wanted to start with this one. It's about the coverage on your hand. You'll get a lot of sparkle from it. Really, really beautiful. So I'm gonna throw on the yellow gold version next to it so you guys can see that. You'll see that it looks a little bit warmer from afar because you're right, it is a little bit warmer. You'll see the yellow in the prongs a lot more, even if the diamonds are, you know, the same shade. So you can see that warmth really come through a lot more. I would say this is a, a one where people kind of struggle the most because, you know, a lot of people will do mixed metals for their diamond band if they have like a yellow gold, a rose gold engagement ring. Um, and if you're gonna mix metals, one of the ways, my favorite ways to do it is with a diamond band. So if you like that really clean straight line from afar, you can kind of see just like diamonds sparkly, um, then it's a really good choice. If you wanna stick with all one metal, then that's also a really easy way to go about it. If I'm gonna throw on rose gold now and you can see how the opinions might start to waver. Rose gold is going to have this really gorgeous coppery tone. And then for reference, this is 18 karat white gold, 18 karat yellow gold, and 14 karat rose gold. We use 14 karat rose gold because the, the shade of the rose tends to be more preferable. It's gonna be a really beautiful balance of like pinky, but still goldy, um, tends to be really, really popular. So zoom in on these guys. We'll stack them right up next to each other. So really, really pretty way to compare some metals right there. Um, I'm going to switch it up a little bit and do some engagement rings next. So um, I have a diamond band engagement ring and a plain band engagement ring in yellow gold. So we can compare how those two look next to one, one another. This is our six prong petite comfort fit. Super, super classic six prongs. It is going to have a white gold head meaning that the prongs are white gold and the shank or the band is yellow gold. And then I'm gonna compare it to the petite shared prong in yellow gold. This also has a white gold head, but it has diamonds on the band. You'll see that it definitely looks a different shade. You get a lot more yellow when it's a plain metal band. So it kind of just depends on if you prefer that or not. You can see the yellow more when I start to creep along to the side and you get that profile view. Put them right next to each other like that. Kind of see the differences there. So yellow gold against yellow gold. I'm gonna pop on our um, four prong petite comfort fit in rose gold so you guys can see that comparison. 
if you tend to like rose gold, you will probably like yellow gold and vice versa. Um, there also are some people on the opposite end of that spectrum as well that are only one type of metal person. I like all of them, um, but I tend to prefer yellow just based on my personal skin tone. I have like all of the undertones, um, which does kind of translate across the board. A lot of people with that olive undertone will lean toward a yellow gold, but there's no rule for picking a metal. Um, there are some definite suggestions if you're considering, you know, putting a, a diamond center stone in it. Some people will say if you're going to do, you know, a really warm diamond in the center, sometimes it's best to go with a warmer metal to match, um, but it's all kind of personal preference. Um, for reference, these are about 1.25 carats. And they both have that mixed metal. So we have those white gold prongs on these guys. And these bands are really nice and dainty. They average about 1.5 millimeters. So you can see it does not cover a lot of surface area on my hand. So if you like dainty, really perfect for that. This is our Aria. And it's about 1.25 carats here. A lot of people will ask me about um, white gold versus platinum. And the correct answer is depends. Um, I'd say the biggest difference is how they're gonna change over time. So they're both gonna start out looking exactly like this. Um, they're gonna be shiny and silver. How um, platinum kind of ages, it'll patina a little bit. So it'll develop this slight matte finish, which is totally normal. Um, it's actually kind of funny that in different cultures, people will be like, oh, like you can tell how long you've been married based on how much patina you have. Um, or on the opposite end of the spectrum, if you're doing white gold, um, it may start to lose its rhodium finish a little bit over time as you come into contact with different chemicals or depending on, you know, your specific pH balance, sweat pattern, things like that. Um, so as that rhodium starts to wear away, you'll notice that little bit of hint of yellow undertone kind of come out. Um, and it's usually gonna be on the base of the finger. So right here, um, it can easily be replated, um, but white gold stays really shiny. It's really good at holding small dainty diamond accents. Um, and then in some other cultures, like I was saying before, they can tell how long you've been married based on how much rhodium you have worn off under you know, your finger. So some people really don't like to replate it because of that cultural symbol. Um, and then other people will replate it if they start to see it warming. I really love um, platinum for heavy metal bands. So something that's like a two millimeter comfort fit. I have this guy right here. You'll see it's just all plain metal, super classic. This is about a 1.25 princess cut. Platinum is super good for something like this. It's gonna be super, super durable. And will just like be the best thing for that center stone. Um, if you're just doing, you know, all one metal throughout. Um, another thing to think about is if you've ever had any metal allergies, I know that like a lot of my friends do. Um, platinum is good because it is hypoallergenic. So if you have anything, um, if you've ever had earrings that bug your skin, something like this will be a little bit safer, especially if um, you're surprising your partner um, and you think they've had metal allergies before, starting with platinum might be a good way to go about it. So there we have that. Something like the petite share prong I have right here. Most people tend to get it in a white gold as opposed to a platinum, just because white gold tends to sometimes be a little bit more sturdy for tiny, tiny diamond accents. Um, so that would be a, a slight recommendation there. But once again, it is based on personal preference. Gorgeous. Um, all right, next I have the Versailles. This is one of the most popular wedding bands and people 
I very much tend to debate between white gold and yellow gold on this one. So I have both of us for us to look at. First, we have the yellow gold version. So I'll show you that there. So we have these petite marquee and round diamonds set with a single shared prong. You get a lot of that shape action right here. Kind of see each shape of the diamond. And then let's compare it to the white gold. So for this one, you'll see these prongs do stand out a little bit more, but the prongs are meant to kind of be seen on this one. It kind of flows with the design. So it depends on your preference there. Diamonds are not all the way around on this one. They go about halfway. You'll see it end right about there. We do have a Luxe Versailles, which is a little bit different in the way it's set, but it goes about three quarters of the way around. And this also, there is a really beautiful engagement ring version. Uh, I love that. So we have this white gold Waverly. You'll see that you have a lot of diamond accents around this approximately two and a half carat pair. And then we have this yellow gold Vienna. So the main differences here are the diamonds. So plain metal, diamonds, then obviously we have a different shape. So you can see that metal contrast there. I would say this is a really popular um, differentiator for people. A lot of people, when they really like yellow gold and they want to see that yellow, they'll pick, you know, opt for the Vienna over the Waverly. Sometimes it's vice versa, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so the, for the Vienna, I do have a really cute um, wedding band to pair with it. It's called the Astra, so I wanted you just to ask about that. And I have it in yellow gold. I really like the yellow gold and the rose gold Astra because they have these little interspersed diamonds. Kind of very asymmetric, super cute. You pair it with something like this. Looks really cute, very like bespoke looking. So here's the Nadia with a 1.25 oval. If you want to do something like the crescent, ooh, wow, that looks really good. Um, fits beautifully. Rose gold and morganite, y'all. This is a really popular trend right now. Absolutely beautiful. This is a peach morganite. Um, this tends to be really popular to match with rose gold. I sell more morganites with rose gold than any other gemstone, so that's why I thought I would highlight it here. The colors pair just so beautifully together. It's a very peachy, rosy color, and then with a very peachy, rosy color. I really like accenting it with some diamonds because it kind of brings out the brightness there. Absolutely stunning. And then if you throw on something like the Marseille with it, that's going to be really, really beautiful. Um, rose gold and yellow gold will be pretty low maintenance in regards to um, their wear and tear over time. They're naturally alloyed with other metals to get them to be the color that they are. Um, so you won't need to do any replating or anything like that. Um, the durability is quite good as well, so you don't have to worry about, um, you know, scratching, bending, things like that. You know, it's always in your best interest to take really good care of your rings um, and get them, you know, checked. Make sure all the prongs are in place every once in a blue moon. Um, but for, you know, compared to platinum and white gold, the maintenance is a little bit different. Um, a lot of people have questions about how to pair those with different diamonds. Um, I really like a warm diamond in yellow gold. Um, my diamond that I have is about an eye color. You'll see that it picks up some of that warmth from the yellow gold setting, but still looks really, really bright, sparkly and white. 
Um, so if you want to maximize on other characteristics like cut, color, clarity, cut, clarity, and carrot, um, you can do that by lowering your color a little bit if you're going to do a warmer metal. If you're going to do an icier metal, people most often do like to optimize the color. So keep that in mind if you have any preference um, or if you need like more specifics on color because we do carry a lot of colors, D all the way through J, you can let us know. All right, that has been talking about our metals. Um, if you have any more specific questions, please reach out to us. Um, happy to send y'all pictures or anything like that. Um, thanks again, guys. Bye.